we give you all the glory Lord, we give you all the praise Eleventh verse says and God said let the earth bring forth grass the herb yielding seed and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind whose seed in it itself upon the earth and it was so and the earth brought forth grass herb yielding seed after his kind and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was in itself after his, its, his kind and God saw it, and it was good. The 13th voice says, and the, low, and the evening and the morning was the third day. And God said, let there be lights in the ferment of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for light in the ferment of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was. And God made two great lights. The greater light to rule the day. And the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. And God set them in the ferment of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creatures that have life. And the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open ferment of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind. And every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creature after his kind and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. The 25th verse says, and God made the beast after the, his kind and the cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw it and it was. And on the 26th verse, it states here, and God said, let us make man in our image. After our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female. Created he them. 28th verse said, and God blessed them. And God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over 
over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Tonight, as we're heeding and hearing the word of God, God never winked. He never took his eye off what his purpose and who he was. And he realized that even though Satan chose to be disobedient, I have already made a way of escape. And when we look here at the word of God, it begins to speak and it begins to suggest that the only thing as we look at the scripture as it parallels to the old to the new, according to St. Matthew 6 and 9, where the disciples asked Jesus, how should they pray? How, how should they pray? He says, pray, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. What was happening at the same time that God Jehovah was creating the earth in its manifestation. He was already creating the disciples. He was foreseeing the disciples, wondering how they would escape the obstacles, the issues, the problems. And every pattern that was established in the Old Testament that didn't work, because they were offering it out of their own substance. He already was pointing to the new because he realized that after the fall, the breach of the covenant with Abraham, excuse me, with Adam, that there was no way to fix it from that place. It could only be fixed and solved through the perfect one. And that was by sending the pure blood sacrifice, Jesus Christ, the Christos, the one with us, to transform us out of darkness and into his marvelous light, to become his sons and his daughters. And tonight, as we look here at the breach that took place in the garden, I want you to know that even when the breach happened, Jesus had already prepared himself to come. Tonight, I want you to look within yourself as we end the climax of this revival. And we're talking about manifestation, kingdom manifestation through praise and worship. But the disciple, even when they followed Jesus, they still yet had questions on how they would accomplish the task of being able to walk in, be persecuted, cast down and forsaken. But Lord, how should we pray? Some were followers of John Baptist. The traditions of what he spoke, declaring that there was one that was coming. But I want you to know tonight that the one that came is still here today. And he's alive and well. And the same position that he looked down on the earth before he began to speak to it, he already saw that the blood would be enough to redeem us. No matter all the 
things that have happened from the Old Testament to the New Testament to this dispensation. He said the blood was enough to conquer everything that we would go through on the earth. That's why he told his disciples that after the breach in the garden, there was no methodology that would be able to be used to correct our brokenness. It couldn't be fixed. It had to come through a, a pure blood sacrifice. And tonight we carry the jubilee of the good news of Jesus Christ. The glorious king, the one that laid down his life, that we could live and that we could have it more abundantly. And then when he got up with all power in heaven and on earth, he said, it's in my hand. He went to hell and he snatched the key. He took away the illegal authority that the Satan thought he had. I said, illegal. And when he snatched the keys, the word says that there were some that followed him and they were able to see. He's asked the question, whom do men say that I am? And there was one that followed him not by just what he listened to, but by what he heard. He said, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Elijah the prophet. But Jesus asked Peter, but who do you say that I am? Peter rose up and he says, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said to him, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. But it's only by the Spirit. And he said from this day forward, you will no longer walk in a place that you don't identify with who I am. Because I'm going to build my church upon you. And he said that the gates of hell shall not prevail against thee. But one other thing I'm going to give you to give you that success is I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. They give you legal access to bind and to loose. And tonight we're going to bind and loose some things. Tonight we're going to take some things tonight. We're going to unlock the provisions that God gave us when we entered into the kingdom. But one thing is for sure, and another thing is certain, that the only way that you can use the keys, because there's more than one, one gives you access into his church through his spirit. That unlocks, let's look at the patio. But when you get the other key and the other keys, that unlocks dimensions of his glory. It transcends all of our understanding. And it begins to create the effect of dominion. Multiplication. Subduing some things. And having dominion over some things. Because you take the keys beyond the outer chamber of just having salvation. And you enter into a chamber that defines you by name. That says you are a kingdom citizen and son and daughter. And in that residence, guess what? He has one earmarked for each of us. There is a room.
room that is personal, that is earmarked only for you. The only one that can access it is you. Hallelujah. As we prepare for this last night, I'm going to read this little rest of this message as we're standing. We're going to praise it however the Lord needs it. I'm going to go into this last part of this message. On the first day, we just began to briefly talk about manifestation. And when we began to talk about manifestation, we began to suggest that that was something that begins to appear. Something that reveals itself and begins to be made known. Amen? Amen. When you manifest something or something is manifested, it's made known. Then we looked briefly at what does it mean to be in or what is a kingdom. Many of us know there's many kingdoms, but only one kingdom that has all power and authority. And that's the power through the Lord Jesus Christ, our King. But this kingdom, outside other small kingdoms, all have governing impacts of kings that have territory and dominion. They even have influence. I'm talking about the little K. They even have power over people through our governmental system. Every kingdom must have a king. But every kingdom, when they become a king, may be looked at or responded to as being a lord. Small L. The only way and the only one that was qualified to be identified as a lord, my God, is the king that I worship. Another important fact is being in his kingdom as a citizen and a son and daughter is that we have to be born into this kingdom through our heart. That means it's a heart matter. Our heart has to be circumcised. The old nature has to be cut away. And the new nature has to come in and reshape and reform the way we are. This was one of the major purposes God told Adam and Eve in the garden. I don't want you to look upon, touch, even desire anything other than me. That tree that's in the middle, don't look at it, don't touch it. Because soon as you do, you will lose your citizenship. All kingdoms that we know, Satan has a kingdom. How many know that tonight? Kingdoms are born, as I said, in the heart. And it's placed in them by their creator. That means if, if one does not have Jesus Christ there as their Lord and Savior and King, and you're yet in an ungenerated state, they're still under the fallen nature of Adam and Eve from the garden. So after that, they will follow that of the flesh. But in God's kingdom tonight, people of God, He's saying that if you have been called and engrafted into his bloodline, that the king that you serve, he has a, a royal covenant that he's made with us. He has privileges and rights and benefits that no one can take away from you. They can't take them away from you. They're not to be bartered with borrowed or taken as being worth nothing. But we are to honor and guard the benefits with thanksgiving. There's a code of ethics and things 
means and which it means and way we should live our life. That represents who? The king. Hallelujah. Amen. In hitting that, I want you to know, go on into part two, it said. We talked briefly about being kingdom agents. The called out, the ones to rule, to reign on the earth as it is in heaven. The calling forth as to be done through the manifestation of praise and worship. Praise and worship is the vehicle that aligns us with heaven to release kingdom manifestation. But one thing about praise, there's a counterfeit. The enemy can praise him, counterfeit, but he can't worship him. That's the difference between outer and inner. But tonight, God is going to release us into the living word and the decrees and the promises and blessings that he has already spoken upon his creation. And just as he breathed into the nostrils of Adam, he's going to breathe into our spirit tonight. Amen. For the last two days, he says that he, there's some things that need to be breathed in again. In a fuller measure. That will cause those that have been called out into his body to rapidly manifest his kingdom. Tonight, I want us to begin to take a second to just, for you to think about your relationship with God. And I want you to reflect on how your relationship has been then, now, and how you desire it to be next. And by the end of the night, I hope we can get it now versus at the end. Because what will happen is that he will produce the new thing that he's trying to release right now into this atmosphere. So as we stand here tonight, you've heard what I just have said. I want you to begin, if you all can just stand up briefly for one more few seconds. I want you to begin to just hear. I want y'all to just create a sound or sing whatever's coming out of your belly based on what's been said. I may preach while you're playing, but just stay there until the Holy Spirit leaves and moves you. Is that okay? Y'all all right? Just let's go in. Begin to lift your hands. Think about the before you got to Christ.